Praise the Lord. Praise God is still good. Yes, in spite of what we are going through, uh, the corona, God's still good. Yes, in fact, in fact, I'm going to let y'all in on a secret. I think I'm responsible for the corona. <laughs> now, let me tell you why. Now, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Uh, I know that the country's economy was doing what we think is well. So I prayed to God, fix this country. Now, I don't know how God going to fix it. I didn't tell him. I just say, fix it. Impeachment didn't fix it. And so when I said, Lord, so the Lord figured out how he wanted to fix it. Now, some folks say, well, Brick Hoffman, you prayed that, but, but, but Christians are dying too. But Paul said that was going to happen. Paul said, all things work together for good to them. He said, all of them. Not some of them. All of them work together for good. To them that love the Lord, to them that are called according to his purpose. In other words, if you want me to fix it, like he did, like he did there in uh, Habakkuk, when he told her back, you just go up there on your watchtower and watch me work. You ain't got to get in my business. You done told me to fix it. Remember, her back and couldn't understand. Lord, how can you take a nation that's worse than we are to fix us? He said, don't worry about that. Just go up there and watch. So God's telling us. Now, we got to take precaution. I'm not telling anybody not take precaution. I'm not going to. We hadn't talked yet, but we don't need to be canceling service. You don't feel like you need to be in a group? You know, don't be. There you go. God's going to fix this. I might get the sneezing and the coughing and go through the... And, and Brother Smith, I know you were afraid as I am because you're the oldest in here. I see you got five or six sweaters on that side. I understand that. I don't have no problem with it. You got to protect yourself. You got to protect yourself. But, 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 but God will fix this. And, and, and we don't know when he's going to fix it. Some folks say, we let the kids out of school two weeks and they come back. God didn't tell you you're going to fix it in two weeks. But he's going to fix it. One thing for sure, brothers, Lord, we can rest assured as children of God, when he fixes it, it will be fixed. God bless you. I'm, I have mixed emotions. I don't know which way to go, left or right. I don't know whether to sing or pray or cry. Turn with me <clears throat> uh, to Daniel chapter I, I was talking yesterday with some of the preaching brethren in the city, and then they texted me, and all from all over the state, all over the country, and they were trying to get my opinion. I kind of hate people to use my opinion as a, a standard, you know. Do your own thing. That's what I, for coffee, y'all canceling service tomorrow? No, we ain't canceling service. But what about this? Well, look, brother, you asked me was I, and I just told you, yeah, I don't know about what about nothing else. But anyway, that encouraged me to take a look at this subject. We've done this before. We used the text. I want to develop it differently. And in verse 16 of Daniel chapter 3, in verse 16 of Daniel chapter 3, this generates an interesting dialogue. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, Watch these words. Now, you need to get this. You need to package this and carry it with you. We do not need to defend 
ourselves before you in this matter. You can tell the devil this morning, I don't need to worry about the corona because I don't need to defend myself in this matter. If it's in God's intent you get sick, you're going to get sick. But on the other hand, if it's his intent that you don't, you don't have to worry about it. So he said, we don't need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it. And he will rescue. Now you need to get that word, rescue. Because you can't be rescued unless you put at risk. When you are put at risk, somebody has an opportunity to rescue you. These young men realized that if Nebuchadnezzar threw them in the furnace, they would be at risk. And they say, and if we are thrown in there, we will be rescued from your hand. O king, but even if he does not, you on the line? We want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your God or worship the image of gold you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual. I was, Lord have mercy, I, I was sitting yesterday. We got back from our meeting and I was watching. They, you know, all day long, they had no basketball on. I, I looked for the SEC tournament. They got all this corona charts and this stuff. No football. No golf. Everything is canceled. And you know it's important. NBA is a $16 billion profit business. I'm almost afraid to tell LeBron. I'm the one that calls it. I prayed for it. Anyway, they had these maps all up. Coronavirus started out here, you went here. Theories are all, all kinds of theories are coming out of this thing. And so it has caused many people to fear. That's why they're putting out all these statements. Who fear? Prepare. But I noticed here in this text, when these three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were challenged, when their faith, when their conviction in God was challenged, they say, we, we're not going to, we're not, you're not going to scare us. You're not going to intimidate us because the God we serve will take care of this. But even if he doesn't, We're going to continue to serve him. He ain't going to get with you. Let me finish. I, I haven't even got through reading the text. Y'all okay? He says, and then when we get over and look at verse 20, he says, and the commanded some of the strongest, some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Chadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men wearing uh, these robes and trousers and turbans and other clothes were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king command was so urgent that the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed not only it. Killed the folk who throw these guys in there. 
That's a hot fire. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men that were tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, certainly, O king. And he said, look, I see four. Walking around in the fire, unbound, unharmed, and the fourth one looked like the son of God. Now, I'm going to try to share with you this morning in this little time we have. Well, I don't know, my son left me a bunch of time. He didn't. The testing of the fire. We know about the fire. You know about the fire. We, we know about every situation, circumstance that occurs to us. A lot of things happen to test us. You, 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 it didn't have to be this virus. It could be anything. But some things happen to test us. They happen to test our loyalty, test our commitment, test where we are in, in, our, in, in our relationship with God. A lot of things test us. Not, not just once in life, but as long as you go through life and you serve God, you're going to have your share of tests. And every test, should prepare you to get stronger for the next day. You know, I, I know that we in the church and the Bible says we're the sons of God, but let me tell you something. That don't mean that you're on easy street. Because these three, that ain't even my son, but I don't know how I got over there. I ain't, even, I ain't said nothing on the paper yet. Because these three boys, you know, they came out of an entirely different environment. They, 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 they weren't even supposed to be uh, attached to this thing at all. This story, many uh, historians and, and theologians who wrote, wrote this, they, they don't even think that this story has anything to do with salvation. But it has everything to do with salvation. Uh, these young men had, had moved from their, their culture. They were totally changed, even to their names. Their names wasn't Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That sounds, that's good for convenience, but that wasn't their names. And when you look back, when you look back in Daniel, and you can just jot these down, chapter 1 and verse 8, that, that gives us a significant of how this thing starts. Daniel had made a commitment that he would not defile himself. A young man. And I, and I say to each of us this morning, when we obeyed the gospel, you needed to make that commitment. But if you make a commitment that you're not going to defile God, you're going to get numerous challenges in life to show you where you are. When David made that, when Daniel made that commitment, that's when things got tough. And this was the first challenge for Daniel got. Now let me tell you, that, that Daniel's a young man. He's not an old man that can't do nothing. He's a young man. But when he makes this commitment, he opens the door for many challenges. And he said, I will not, did not foul my, myself. I will not defile my soul. Let me tell you what that, that, that entails. Dame, uh, uh, Daniel had a shameless courage. And I tell you this morning, church, each of us need to understand and develop that term in our heads. It's not Bible term, but everything that we see in the Bible through biblical characters 
that, that stand for God in spite of the fire have a shameless courage. You know what that entails? When you have a shameless courage, that means that you're not going to be disrupted. If you got a commitment, you're not going to let your peers change your mind. You're not going to let situations change your mind. You're not going to let circumstances change your mind. You got a shameless courage. You're, you're standing, you're not just depending on you, but you're depending on the one who told you. That's, that's why uh, Solomon was able to write, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding, and in all your ways acknowledge him. So, so, so that's that shameless. Daniel had that, and, and, and no matter how we look at a, 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 a lifelong problems or how we look at our lives, there are going to be challenges at different intervals in your life, and some of them will be on a major scale, some of them will be on a, a lower scale, but you've got to stand and let, test the fire rather than letting the fire test you. We got to make up our minds. That's what Christianity is, a made-up mind. I'm going to follow the Lord. I'm going to obey him. I'm going to follow him. That's elementary. You have to make up your mind. Some folk haven't made up their mind yet. Been around the church building 100 years. Haven't made up their mind yet. They watch and see which way the wind going to blow. Every morning they get up testing the wind. They ask going to the right. I'm going to go. No, no. You, you, you make a conviction. These young men made a conviction. And I want you to notice something. That Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego hadn't been raised to follow, follow God. But they made a conviction. And when they made their conviction, they stood on it. They stood on it. Notice those strong words, and I read them to you from 16. They said, we don't know. We, we, this, this is not our problem. We, we don't need to defend ourselves. We don't need to do anything because the God we trust is going to deliver us. How many believe that? Now, that doesn't mean that we just throw down our hands and, and just take the caution to the wind. That don't mean that you, you go into in, uh, every uh, uh, development center where they testing for corona and you go on in there like, like you unprotected, just touch and hug everybody and tongue them. And all. No, 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 that, that don't mean that you bless me. But that, what that means is you've got a strong conviction that if anything was to happen, that God has a purpose for you. That's what, that's what, they, that's what, the, that's what Daniel said. Now, Daniel, the reason that he stood strong, Daniel said, I, I have purpose in a purpose. How many of us as Christians live with a purpose? It's more than just coming to church, as we say, on Sunday morning and singing. Drinking our juice, eating our cracker. You gotta have a purpose. When you got a purpose driven, purpose drives you. Drives you from one level to the next. You're not satisfied with just coming to church and sitting in the chair and singing a couple of songs and putting a dollar or two in collect. You your purpose is bigger than that. Your purpose ought to be that you want to do God's will because he can do so much more for you. Well, I don't understand. Some of my preaching brothers are back up. We, we cancel in service. Why? Why? Oh, that, will that speed up the delivery of corona? Why? Yes, have caution. But I remember the Hebrew writer saying that Jesus is the same today, yesterday, and forever. Circumstances don't change him. Yes, we ought to have caution, but man, some things we're going to, you're just going to be tested by things in life. And when you can stand, doesn't mean that you're going to go through the test. But when you can make a commitment to stand 
as Daniel did, the result was that God honored Daniel for his faith. He honored him. He respected him. And not only that, he raised him up in life physically and spiritually for his uncompromising faith. You can't have compromising faith and serve God. Some folk can be, some folk can be just as faithful as long as the sun is shining, the temperature is 80 degrees, don't let a little rain come. I'm saying every once in a while, the testing is necessary. It's necessary. And, 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 and talking, with, talking, with a, talking with a Church of Christ guy, yesterday we had a preacher's meeting. I don't know why this stuff had to happen to us. Why not? That, doesn't that sound foolish to you? I don't know why it happened. Why not? Maybe, maybe it happened to help you to be who you need to be. Just study Exodus chapter 6. Don't, don't turn it. Just study In speaking to the children of Israel, God said, I am the Lord your God who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Not only did that, I did two things. I brought you out of the land of Egypt, and I brought you out of bond. I did two things. And you know what? When Israel was in bondage, every day, here we are, every day, we cried to God. We wore him out. Lord, I'm not making enough money. Lord, Help me with my strength. Lord, give me more faith. Lord, while we were in Egypt and in bondage, we, we woke God out. And as soon as he delivered us, they wanted a graven image. We, we need something to serve. What do you mean? You, you, you didn't worry about having a graven image when you, when you was in bondage to some of us. You, you didn't need anything physical when you were calling on God when you were in your bondage, when you were in your Egypt. But now all of a sudden, you need something physical. Oh, Lord ain't showed me nothing. Did you wake up? I still don't feel straight. What, well, that's not God's problem. You, you've got to develop a shameless character where you're willing to fight, where you're willing to take a stand. The church of Christ, and, and Jesus has already declared this, you can stand on this. He said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, and it will stand forever. You can, you can, you can take that to the bank. I don't care how many coronas come along, the church is going to stand. I don't care how many folk go in and out, the church is going to stand. And so trust in God. Being able to hold on to his hand, being able to go through the fire, being able to test the fire, God is going to do his part. And when he does his part, what you and I have to learn is to give him the glory. You know, because that, that's just human nature. When, when, when God has been good to us, delivered us, we, we don't ever give him the glory. I, 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 use the, I often use this scenario about a child in school getting good grades. When he gets A's and B's, he made them. When he gets a D, teacher gave it to him. No, no. We, we don't want to give the glory. Look what we've done. No, no, God, it's what God has done for us. And we have to learn to give him the glory. When you look in this text, uh, when, when uh, those, those Hebrew boys were delivered, they gave God the glory. In fact, they gave God the glory before he delivered them. They had already built up their trust before he was delivered. And then the next thing, 
after that, we have to learn to be consistent when it comes to worship. You know, because let me tell you something. This service here, there should be victory here. Amen. We come sometime, and I know, I know the cares of life are real. I'm real. Man, but when you come to serve God, this ought to be a celebration. A, you know what a celebration? This ought to be a celebration. Some of us come, and we sad when we come in, and we, I, I hate to look at some people because I don't want to be sad. <laughs> I know they're sitting over there in long faith. I don't even look at them. This is a celebration. When we do this, it's a celebration. If nothing else stirs your spirit and stirs your heart, when we do this, it's a celebration. We get here and act like and, and just act like we casual on the corner. Well, why are we gonna eat this cracker out of this cup and drink this? You're crazy. Jesus died shedded blood for a wretch like me. So I ought to be celebrated this. When we come to praise him and worship, we ought to, this is a celebration. You don't have to look at, look at anybody else's life. Think of what, look at what God has done for you. And if he hadn't done anything, you don't have a reason to celebrate. But I can tell you what, you breathe in his air. And David said that, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. That's a celebration. And we ought to take advantage of it. Now, I want to tell you this. What, just because you came to church doesn't mean that Satan don't want, want you. He still wants you. And Satan has a desire for you to worship him. Some folks say, oh, hang on, I ain't going to ever worship the devil. He wants to destroy what real worship is, have you to turn to him. And I want to tell you something. The easiest way for him to achieve that in you is to have you to start thinking about what it is that you're doing in worship rather than worship. You know that? Some folks come to church and they think about everything. They, all the bills they got to pay next week. All the bills they haven't paid this week. People, what they weren't. That's why so many folks, they, they know every color you got them. He had on blue socks and all that brown. How would you know that? That's Satan. He can get you thinking about other foolish stuff. Let me tell you. In, 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 in Romans chapter 6, verse 16, don't turn it, don't turn it, just jot it down. Paul said that we need to know who we have obeyed. And that means, how do we present ourselves to him? We are slaves to the Lord. We've obeyed him, and we need to know. How, in other words, you've got to know him, not just know that, that there is a God, know Jesus is Christ. You've got to know him intimately. What is it that he expects from me? What does he want out of me? Not, not what does he want out of us. What does he want out of me? Paul said we need to know who we have obeyed. How many of us really know Jesus? Don't raise your hand. Do we just go through the motion? You know, we go where it's most popular at and where we think we can feel good at. He make me feel, I like doing he make me feel so good. Not about how you feel. But it's how you obey. You know those Hebrew boys? They didn't say anything about how they feel. All they were concerned about, their attitude was, we are convicted and God is going to take care of us. That's what you and I. Satan wants to steal your joy. That's why some folk walk, can walk around so easily among God's people, so easily looking long face. Wants you to feel like they feel. You know those cliche, misery, love company. Amen. Somebody said, how can you soar with eagles and fly with turkeys? You, you know, you, you, you got to. We got to think out of the box. We serve a God that can do anything but fail. These boys, when they were tempted, 
They said, we don't care how much crushing you put on us. We're not going to serve your God. That's the attitude you got to have. Satan wants to be worshipped just like God, so he can steal your joy. Uh, and one of the other the word. Now some folks say, I'd never deny the Bible. Oh yeah, we, that happens on a daily basis. I've been guilty. I didn't get up and say, oh I deny that. Just know the truth. So James said, for him that know to do good and do it not to him is what? That's denying the truth. That's, that's denying the truth. So, so we got to be positive in this. We Things are going to happen. You know what? I would be afraid if things didn't happen. Because none of us are going to live in a perfect world. If we lived in a perfect world, man, we'd be all right. One of the biggest things that, that is crowded, folks say, I don't know about that because that's back in the day. Idolatry is one of the biggest things in the United States now. They're crucifying the church, slapping the life out of the church. And some folks say, idolatry? Because now we live in a society that we make everything more important than God. Amen. If this is more important, then that's your God. And then, we got to learn to be loyal. Peer pressure breaks down loyalty. You know what loyalty is? Allegiance. When you have allegiance and you're loyal to something, it takes a lot to overturn it. And look, look, look at our young people, our kids, children, and many of us adults too. Peer pressure, man, peer pressure. Things that you don't even like that you want to be accepted, so you're gonna change. Amen. And I don't want to go and describe these things because that, but but peer pressure is tough. Peer pressure. We want to be accepted. I want to be just like them. I want them to know I'm one of them, one of the boys. These young men, even though there were certain Jews who did not regard God as the same God, these fellas would not turn to the king of God. They trusted in God Almighty. And that's what we got to do. Peer pressure. Peer pressure is real. We, we blame it on our young people, but many of us are dumb, so come to it as well. And, and so, therefore, we have to learn to stand and fight the good fight of faith. Turn from drunk. Not just turn, but turn and decide that we're going to leave that behind us. Paul says in Romans 8 31, just write it down. Paul said, If God be for us, who can be against us? If he's for me, if you really believe that he is for you. Amen. Now see, when you say, yeah, I trust that because I believe that, that should change your life. That alone, that statement ought to change your life. If God be for us, who can be against us? I want that to resonate. Ask yourself, is God for me? Things will change if you stand on that truth. Your conviction is that God is for me. You know, look at these. Look, at, I, I have to keep taking you back to this, this elementary part. Look at those, those young Jewish boys who are meeting the real first test in their life, cast in a fiery furnace. I can just see some of us in the same situation. We would have never had an opportunity to be cast. But when, when, when Nebuchadnezzar had them guys light the furnace, we, we, oh, you ain't got to worry about that. We threw, we, we threw. No, 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 no. Challenges are going to come. But if the statement that Paul states in Romans 8, if God is for you, who can be against? 
when he spoke about Abraham in Romans chapter 4. He said, Abraham never wavered. He didn't almost waver. And his challenges were far greater than what you and I face today. He said he never wavered. He believed in God. Not only did he believe in God, but he sure stood on his promises. And every one of us have sung standing on the promises of God. And all we like is the rhythmic part of that song because many times when God's promises come into play where we got to stand, we fail. I wonder this morning, are you standing on God? And then in, in the conclusion, we've got to resist pressure. Pressure's real, isn't it? I was looking at an old commercial on TV the other day, and they said, pressure, bust a pipe. Y'all look like y'all agree with that. That's a scary thought. Did you know that? That's a scary thought. Because you know most Afro-Americans, we have high blood pressure. That's scary, isn't it? We take that for granted. Some of, some of us take that as a badge on. Yeah, I've been taking high blood pressure medicine for 40 years. Like that's a badge of honor. Pressure is scary. Amen. And if we're that concerned about it, naturally, we should be more concerned about it from a spiritual aspect. Amen. And we talk about pressure will bust a pipe. Well, Think about what high blood pressure does to your body. My doctor always tells me, remind me, every time I go in, I can quote it. It's called, it affects every part, of, every part of your body. Eyesight, muscle, veins in your leg. I have to stop, doc, don't keep telling me all that. I'm broke down now. you telling me that every time. But pressures from the spiritual aspect affect our spirituality. And so we have to learn to stand and be loyal. We have to learn to trust the Lord and obey Him. We have to learn to stand, stand firm in the midst of uh, all of our fires that come in life. And then now some will literally be fires, some will be illnesses, some will be other pressures, but we have to learn to take a stand. As Jesus and Luther said, that we can be afraid, but only be afraid of them that can kill both body and spirit. That's what he said. He didn't say just be afraid of folk. He said, but be afraid only of those who can do both. That lets me know that all of the trials that I have in life, I might die, but it don't kill my spirit. Physically, I might leave this over here, but my spirit. And you, that's what we got to make preparations for, is the spirit. Because all of us are going to die. Physically, we all going to leave. Bible says, appointed to me once and I had to death come down. Amen. So physically, we all going to leave here. I'm strong and recovery. I'm just as strong as I am. I, I used to be that way too. I used to be that way. When my wife met me, I was a lean, mean fighting machine. <laughs> now and I look like the good year blend. <laughs> So, so you're going to change. That's going to change. 
But my but the but the point is is that you 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 gotta stay commitment, you gotta stand firm, regardless of what else goes on in life, stand firm. And resist the pressures. How many pressures want you to change? I don't know how many folks call in there. We, we, we cancel and test them on. No. We cancel. But they say, they say, they say, yeah, they say a lot. I'm coming to serve the Lord. And Jesus said, just be afraid. Are those that can kill your body and your soul. I'm not trying to rush you back. What I want to do is trust more in God's word. Because even if I die physically, spiritually, I can go home and live with the Lord. And let me tell you something. That journey will be worthwhile. Why come, why come through all of this in this life, corona and everything else, die and go to hell? So there's something worth fighting for. And that is being true, being honest, and confessing the Lord before men so that he can, he, we can trust in him, he can trust us. In his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, bless those but persecuted for righteousness sake. He says, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed. This, this is good stuff. You need to package this and take it. Are you, when you, men shall revile you, persecute you, say all kind of evil things against you, falsely for my sake. You know what he told those, those guys? And they had been through something. I don't know if I can, I'm telling you this now. Jesus told them, he said, rejoice and be, not just be glad. He said, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Why should I do that, Jesus? He said, coffee for great is your reward. Amen. In other words, if you can stay consistent, if you can take a stand, if you can stand firm, and you can live that way in spite of what comes along. Come on. He said, great is your reward. I'm looking forward to that. Amen. I'm looking forward to that. When time should wind up, time should be no more, I'm looking forward to that. that because that trust is what will keep us out of the furnace. We're going to have a furnace, those fires in life. But that, that trust is what keeps us out of the furnace. And he said, great is your reward. If we can live that way, if we can just mimic that in our lives, the Lord will take care of us. Hebrews writer says this. He says, in the time of help, God is our help. And this morning, we need help. And I'm wondering this morning how many of us need that. How many of us here that, that, that we just need a makeover? You know, every, you, you ever watch that program on TV, uh, Makeover? How they take an old house and just over make it, and when you see it again, it, it looks, uh, this morning God can make us over. But you have to come. He doesn't make us over physically. You got big feet, you don't have them. But he makes us over spiritually. Gives us a new mind, a new outlook on life. God knows when we're confronted with issues such as this, we need a new outlook. If you're here this morning and you're not, you're not a, a member of the church, I'm saying that the, the church, the body of Christ, the church that Jesus died for, you need to consider that. You need a makeover. I want to tell you something. In the church or out of the church, you're going to be tested. The only difference in the church is that there is there is a, a eventual stopping place. See, uh, I heard these folk testify. You heard God ain't gonna put no more in your stand. Bible don't teach that. But what He does teach, First Corinthians ten, 
It said that he will make a way for escape. That's your spot. Perhaps you may be here this morning. You're just struggling with issues that, uh, you know what got this whole thing started with Sister Ernest to start with? Same thing that starts with many of us. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar couldn't sleep. Bible says he tossed and turned all night. He, 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 he was kind of like the song was, that was trouble in his way. He had to cry all night. He tossed and turned all night. Some of us, same way, trouble in our way. Tossed and turned all night. Now, I know that that happens with some of us. And with this cell phone, now we, we, we get on the phone, start texting. You look at some of the texts, they up all night like Trump, t- texting. Trouble in their way. You need to come and let Jesus fix that. You need to come. Turn your life over to him. Now, I, I know that many folks are, are saying, you know, as soon as I get things straight, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a commitment. I'm going to turn my life over. Let me tell you something. Things going on in your life you can't fix. If you could fix them, they'd already be fixed. But you're going to have to let Jesus fix it. It begins in you trusting and obeying him. Obedience. We have to learn to obey him. And then once we obey him, we have to learn to abide in him. Don't don't obey him on an emotional charge and don't don't intend to abide. You know what abide means? It means to stay. All through the Bible, that word abide is used. Abide in him and he in you. He's not going to stay in you if you don't have any intent of staying in him. And one thing that God knows that none of us, he knows the heart of all of us. He knows my heart. He knows yours. And not and, and not, and not only that, but, but abide means that when, when you get in him, what, what helps you to stay is a result of his word. All of us have a word. Some can, just, some can do things that others can't, but work doesn't actually mean that you, you well, I, don't, I can't have my work. I don't guess I can get in it. No, 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 no. That's where your blessings come from. Some folks think somebody else don't cut you. You don't cut your own blessings off. Get in the Lord and work. That, that old term that we're using, get in where you fit in. Do something and just live for Christ. If you just live for Christ, you've done all right. And if you hear this morning, perhaps you perhaps you 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 you've been lingering on the side. Uh, you've been thinking about this. This sounds pretty good, uh, but but you gotta fix some things. Well, I'm already a child of God. Let me tell you something. To be in Christ, that's what makes us the son of God. You don't become a son of God outside of Christ. You become a son being in him. And that starts by you hearing God's word. Believing it, repenting of your sin. Confess Jesus and be willing to be buried with him in the water grave of baptism. Baptism is what puts you in him. But what if I've done that? And I know Satan. Satan will stagnate your life. He'll stagnate your faith. He'll stagnate your desires. He'll impede your development as a Christian. That's when you have to come down. Ask the Lord to help you. Ask the Lord to give you faith, help you to grow in faith. Now, you've got to be careful when you ask this, because if you want to grow in faith, what does it take for you to grow in faith? Test. That's a test that these folks do. You want to grow in faith? You're going to have more tests. Not only are you going to be, have a fire in the furnace, you're going to have a fire in the fire barrel. Fire in your, you're going to have some fires in life. And if you're here this morning and you just need our prayer, that's what the house of God is for. The Bible declares that the prayers of the righteous avail much. Let me tell you something. There's another issue with that corona thing. Because if there were ever time for a Christian to pray, it's now. It's now. Why does God have to send us those kinds of things, those kind of pests all over life, just to get us to pray? 
Send us all kinds of folk that hadn't prayed before are praying now. They had old MSNBC. They had uh, had an old, old, old guy they ran off a couple of weeks ago, Chris Matthews. You all know him? You know they ran him off. They, they were showing this thing. Someday I will get in this old sinful world. My time is running out and the devil won't quit. He's trying to blind my eyes to the light of my life. But something is sustaining me. We're going to ask you. Stand, stand, stand where you are. Stand where you are. Stand where you are. Just stand where you are. Stand where you are. I want you to think about something. I want you to think about something. I want you to go back into your own archives, in your own mind, and ask yourself. You don't have to talk out loud. Has God been good to you? Have you had some fires in your life, some challenges in your life? In this old sinful world, my time is running out, and the devil won't quit. He's trying to blind my eyes to the light of my life, but something is sustaining me. In this old sinful world, my time is running out, and the devil won't quit. He's trying to blind my eyes to the light of my life, but something is sustaining me. Deep down within my soul, my word is in control. Hello, I'm Richard Coffey, Senior Minister of Sweetwater Church of Christ. I'm here with Minister uh, Peterson. I want to introduce him who's doing the pulpit preaching here for us. Okay. Hi, Brother Javante Peterson again, Minister here at Sweetwater Church of Christ. we just like to take this opportunity to thank you for visiting us. We pray that you were blessed by the worship services. And if by chance you have any questions, we pray that you reach out and contact us so that we can answer any biblical questions that you have. For any Bible question that you can bring, we'll be sure to give you a Bible answer. Remember, morning Bible class starts on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock. Worship service begins at 10. Afternoon service begins at 6 o'clock. And then midweek Bible study begins at 7. We pray that you come out at any given moment. Come out, worship with us here at the Sweetwater Church of Christ, where the gospel is preached and the water is sweet. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs>